call for articulate artists, get the grammatical Circular sources brimming with rich glamour Food for your thoughts, played it a different animal Rounds on me, keep tabs, we insurmountable Swerve, murder Happy Tuesday Hello and welcome to another What's On Your Mind <clears throat> It's been a good week so far Because it's only been two days, but it's been a decent two days, so that's always a plus. Uh, today I'm excited. I have Dr. Samuel with me, and we're going to be talking all about relationships, uh, which should be a good question because I feel like we always have relationship questions. And actually, a lot of my lives this month are kind of around that topic, which will be good. Like on Thursday, Emily and I are chatting about monogamy and if it's still a thing, if people are still into it or not. So that will be fun on Thursday. Tune in for that. Um, and next week, I have someone who actually proposed to her husband. So that will be a fun chat, that fun chat as well. But today, we're talking about uh, intentional dating and some relationship things. Oh, there he is. Perfect. Let me go ahead and add him. Buddy, welcome to another episode of What's On Your Mind, my Tuesday live where I talk. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm fighting it off. I think it's allergies, but it's my Tuesday live where I talk about different mental health issues and concerns and things that impact our mental health. Hey, hi. Thank you so much for joining me. You're so welcome. I'm so sorry. Introducing the topic to everyone. It's um, sexual assault and child abuse awareness month. So we're going to just talk about um, sexual assault and the impact, the mental health impacts that it has on its on its um, victims. Um, and thank you so much for joining me. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Well, my name is Carrie Wilson, and I'm a behavior management consultant. And what that is is I support um, yeah, families and who are struggling with behavioral issues, who are struggling with mental health, who are struggling with um, just a cohesive family environment, creating a cohesive family environment. And I go in and I walk them through the steps, and I create a family uh, plan for them to to get their relationship back on track. Oh, that's awesome! I'm sure that that's Taxing work, but good work. Yeah. Um, I imagine it would be a little bit draining as well, going in and, and dealing with their, their issues and problems. Yes, always. <laughs> but it's, you know, when you do, when it, it really is when you do something that you enjoy, it is not feeling like it's, it's, um, it's work. Right, yeah. Well, you know, as I mentioned, it's a Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and um the numbers for it are so high. So I was looking up some before our live, and it says that every 68 seconds, someone is sexually assaulted in the U.S. I think it's important to note that sexual assault is um, defined as any non-consensual sexual act. So like kissing, touching, harassment that falls under um, sexual assault. So that's within that 68, every 68 seconds, um, which is, such such a large large number, um, and it said that four hundred sixty three thousand sixty three thirty four um, individuals over the age of twelve um, were assaulted each year. It's it's crazy how large that number is. You know, even though I know we have like millions of people, that's such a a high percentage of people who are impacted by this. Do you see um, a lot of it? Um, within your practice? You know what, I haven't, and only I believe only because in the community do we really talk about it? Do we really want to share that? Do, do they really share that information? So it's very, you have to dig deep in order to get to that, and a lot of, a lot of uh, our, our community is mistrusting of services because they've been let down so many times with services, service providers, that it doesn't get there always. And unfortunately, it, it's when it's too late. It's when it's, act, when it's, um, it's now behavior. You know, it's, it's because they're not treating the core issue or the 
core reasoning or the core reason behind the behavior or behind the, the mental health struggle or behind the trauma. So, yeah, we we need to talk about it more. And this is why I wanted to come on your platform. And um, even though it's a triggering subject for myself as well, um, I definitely wanted to come on and talk about it and share the platform so that our community breaks down the stigma of not feel of feeling that it's it's not it's taboo it's something that we don't address it's something that we don't talk about yeah which is unfortunate because it impacts so many of us like you know when we saw the me too movement happen almost everybody had a me too statement you know and one in six i think women have been the victim of um rape or attempted rape so it's something that definitely impacts our community yeah we all act like it doesn't because it is it's such an uncomfortable topic to talk about and people wait until the destructive you know decisions and behaviors come out then they want to address that without addressing the root cause of like what caused that change exactly and why we continue to perpetuate it from generation to generation because if we don't really tackle it if we kind of shove it under the rug saying you know what we don't talk that we are we don't we know that uncle or that family member or that person did this but we don't talk to them you know we don't address it we don't yeah. we don't char- charge them you know we don't do anything about it we kind of just act like it's not it didn't happen or we just kind of say get over it in a sense or children are not believed you know we still have that stigma of not being believed about the things that we say in regards to our bodies and the things that you know happen to our bodies so Mm -hmm. definitely we have to do better and um i do like these awareness things um but i do think that it needs to be more than that yeah absolutely and it's always been crazy to me how like family members will know and say like oh don't leave so and so alone with so and so or don't do that it's like why are you inviting him why are you inviting that person that you know is a problem to these family functions like it's okay that that person is abusive and you think like oh just keeping the kids away even though there's been like a long history that that doesn't work and you're literally just leading your children into the lion's den it's never really made sense to me and i think it's because we don't like it's just mental in the black community mental health isn't isn't really talked about you know i mean it's kind of like you know it's that it's in the room (laughs) But do you really have a conversation where we are intervening and saying, listen, so-and-so, you have a problem. You cannot be around my children because you have a problem. So let's get this problem, you know, looked at. You need to go seek help because you will not be welcomed around my family or around me if you don't. Do we do that? No, Mm -hmm. we don't do these interventions. We, Like I said, we kind of just sugarcoat it and we kind of like, okay, you know, and and also teaching our children at very young ages like your it's this is your body this is your your temple and nobody's allowed to invade your space or touch you or even that you have to hug or call uncle or auntie so and so auntie or uncle if you don't want to right. if you feel uncomfortable about it or they make you feel cuz i am such a big um you know supporter of children's words and feelings and emotions because they are innocent and they don't know, they don't have all of the baggage that we come with as adults. Mm -hmm. So if they are coming to you and saying, I'm uncomfortable around so-and-so, listen. Yeah. Take heed of what they're saying. Don't dismiss them as, oh, you know, that's your uncle, that's your auntie, or, you know, that's your grandfather, that's your, you know, do not just disregard it. Really take heed of what they're saying and teach them their body the right name for their body parts and also that it's their choice Mm -hmm. you don't have to hug somebody somebody doesn't have to come into their space ask first um i have all four boy children and i make sure to let them know you ask first for permission before you hug before you you know put yourself your space into other people's spaces especially when it comes to young females you know Mm -hmm. what i mean yeah. So I definitely think the conversations need to continue. Uh, the education needs to continue as into consensual. Mm-hmm. What is consensual? What is non-consensual? What is okay and what is not okay? Like good, that whole good touch, bad touch, it still needs to be reiterated uh, when it comes to children. And it needs to start younger, mm-hmm. um, not starting at 
you know, when they're going through puberty or when they're, you know, that it's time for the talk. Yeah. It needs to start from, from the jump, you know, just like, like, like at first, we all have cute names for our body parts as we're growing up, but as long as they are aware, this is a cute name that we call, but this <clears throat> is the real name. Yeah. So if anybody is touching or doing anything with those parts that they're able to label it easily and, um, you know, know where to, know what to say and know what, where to go for the supports that they need. Yeah, and you're right. It starts, too, when they're younger because even it might seem simple to be like, oh, give so-and-so a hug, even if you don't want to. But that sort of implants in their mind that it's okay to, like, ignore their own personal feelings because this older person is saying that I need to give them a hug or this older person is saying that I need to connect with them. And then they stop listening to themselves. So then when that same person later tries to do something, it's like, oh, well, you know, mom or dad said I should do it anyways because they're older. So it's important when they're younger to really instill in them that, you know, it's okay to say no. You don't have to hug someone. And it's interesting to me how people get really offended sometimes by it. It's like, well, they're a child, first of all. Don't take it so personally. Um, and be like, they, should, they shouldn't they should have to hug anyone if they don't want to. I'm an adult. I don't want to hug people if I don't want to. So why do they? Exactly. And, and and it's so weird that we, and I, I was brought up with that as well, where I had to call auntie and uncle and, and go and hug and, and, you know, and that's how the predators get into that circle. And that's how the predators feel that it's okay to do these things because you're kind of giving them permission in mm -hmm. a sense, not, not, I'm sure my mother wasn't aware or, you know, that, th that she was, or, you know what I mean? Or that was happening or they were aware, but again, it's those things that we know that's happening. We know that's the creepy uncle or the creepy aunt, but yet, or the creepy grandfather, creepy grandmother. And we still, you know, we still allow mm -hmm. our children to be around it, but we don't, in, we don't, give them the tools to make the right decisions around it, yeah. you know, or to stay away from it, you know? So what do you it's, think it's, that is from, like, a mental health standpoint? Because for me, and, you know, I don't have kids, so I say everything with a grain of salt, but, like, I just couldn't imagine, like, knowing, especially if it's something that I had been through at a younger age, <clears throat> I couldn't then imagine leaving my kids alone with that person or feeling like it's okay or even, like, not listening to my kids when they say it happened to them, knowing full well if it happened to me or to someone else in the family, like, do you think it's something that the the parent is just blocking out to protect themselves? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody handles trauma differently. And some people, you know, block things out, don't want to confront things, make excuses for things, depending on how it's that it's looked at in the family how it's dealt with in the family. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if it's coming, going from generation to generation and each generation is changing the narrative as, the, as into it's okay, or no, it didn't happen to you, or they're not believing them, then you, you, what, what you learn is what you carry on. If you do not make those changes for yourself and do different and learn different mm -hmm. um, way of dealing with things. So I totally, I totally understand that trauma can make us do things that, we don't understand. It's just like when we say, like, to a, a battered woman or a battered guy, a battered man, why don't you leave? You yeah. know, it's not that easy. You know, it's not that easy when you're immersed in something and when it's constantly being reiterated to you that this is a norm or this is the way that, um, you know, life is going to be for you. Yeah. So I, to I totally understand that, understand that it's, it's not easy to, like, not say to their if it's we know it happened to you and then you're still having your children around that person right you know yeah yeah it's it's hard because it's also one of those things that it's like there's so many layers and it's so like interwoven and <clears throat> like how to stop it and you know even like we mentioned talking to them about it when they're younger um yeah. because a lot of people do wait until they're older and it's like that's often too late given the age range when it happens and i think it's unfortunate that a lot of times parents Oh, I'm trying to figure out the rest, the best way to say it, because you know how parents get on us non-parents for judging them. I'm not judging, but I do feel like sometimes parents wait until they're comfortable to have that conversation, not necessarily when it's the right time to have it with the children. Um, no, and that's where so many things in general, like when we talk about sex ed and all those states that are trying to ban it, it's like, no, you want to talk to them about that stuff younger because they're seeing it. And if you're not talking yeah. to them about it, their little minds are making up whatever they can 
to deal with it versus if you would just have a conversation like love is love and here are your body parts and things like that, then it makes it easier for the child. You're then giving them the tools to navigate life as they should. Exactly. Exactly. And, and again, it's not about nobody's parent shaming. Nobody's saying we're just trying to give you tools to help you do better, be better, because we want our next generation, our next generation to be healthy and to not continue to repeat the negative cycles that um, the trauma cycles that are keep happening from generation to generation. So starting young is always, to me, the best, um, you know, the best way to change uh, the, the future. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was interesting, too, when I was looking up, because we all know that men are affected by it as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's like okay. one in six women are um, affected by attempted rape, it's out of those, um, one in ten of them are men, actually. Um, and what I found was really interesting is that males who go to college are five times more likely to experience some form of sexual assault than those who don't. <laughs> which I was like, that's that's interesting. I think I would have wanted to read more into that. But men definitely do experience it, and probably even at a higher rate than what we talk about because we're just discussing the ones that are willing to admit it. And I exactly. think that so much of it comes down to how we how we treat both sexes during puberty and, like, what we place on their shoulders. And that's why I am a big component of, like, women owning their sexuality and, like, not being sex shamed because I feel like, it lends to the way people like to say, like, oh, she's fast or she's blah, 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 when really they're just a teenager going through hormones. But, like, we're totally fine about discussing, like, oh, boys are going through their hormones, but we don't discuss it for girls. And the minute a girl does, it's she's fast, she's promiscuous, she's whatever. But it's like she's just going through hormones. But when you put all those negative things on them, A, they're less likely to talk about it, and B, it makes them a sitting predator for grooming. And yeah. what's most unfortunate is that of all like the girls, I don't want I don't want to give the numbers for this one because I don't remember them exactly. But it's like <clears throat> of all the teenage girls who are pregnant from age like fourteen and nineteen or whatever, like most of the fathers were age twenty and above. But yeah. we call out the girls for being promiscuous. They're teenagers, yeah. of course. They're they're a corny little rabbits, just like boys. We just don't talk about it. But we're calling yeah. them being promiscuous when you have grown men who are literally preying on them and grooming them. Totally. <clears throat> totally. And it's and it's also I was watching a lot of um, when per, kind of preparing for this. I was watching this documentary and or it was uh, about young girls who you know these the the social media now who they go in and they send like these and the boys are the ones asking like pushing and mm -hmm. sometimes major i'm sure girls are willing and open as well like you said accepting their they're they're just coming into themselves and they're just sort of feeling things out and the social media is a big way of of like the snapchat where you think that it's going to disappear but it yeah. really isn't and then it becomes a whole bullying and, and um and who gets the brunt of it is the females that oh, feel the yeah. worse and you know kill themselves you know suicide over the fact that you know this is out there and they're being targeted our schools are not taking on the responsibility of you know, looking into the social media piece, the bullying, the, you know, the sexual content piece, because who's really policing Instagram in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. who's really policing Snapchat in a sense when it comes to, because I've reported things that I think are inappropriate yeah. and Snapchat has come back and yeah. you know, Instagram has come back to me and said, oh, it, <clears throat> it follows their guidelines. I was like, oh, okay then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. <clears throat> it's definitely harder. And that's what I say understand overstanding for parents of what your children are doing online and and losing the narrative that just because it's out there does not mean that your children have to be um, exposed to it does not mean a 10 year old should have a phone does not mean a six year old should be on it on TikTok yeah. just because it's out there and all their circles around them are exposed to it doesn't mean that you have to do it. I know kids give us the pressures of, oh, well, so-and-so's doing it. It's the newest thing. But we as have to be able to police our children. And our children are sometimes not, most of the times, not ready for all of these images and all of these things mm -hmm. that social pressures that come with it. So we really have to, and if we're not even able to have these conversations throughout their their childhood, 
um, how are they going to be able to be ready to see porn all the time being exposed to, or a boy, a fast boy, as you would say, yeah. you know, ask them to just, just show me, you know, it's just between me and you yeah. just show me your, 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 your boobs, you know what I mean? Or yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to show anybody else. It's between me and you. And then they go out and they do the same. Cause I, I really don't hear a lot of the times that the boys are the ones having those pictures out there. And the girls right. are the ones exposing them. Right. So it, it really is that we have to teach our boys better. Yeah. And how to deal with women and relationships better and how to respect women in themselves. Mm -hmm. um, Green individual said social media makes parenting 10 times harder. We can police our children, but still they can still get a hold of the device from their school and it's difficult. That's true. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, you can only control what you have at your home and what you're able to but I think even just that little bit makes makes a difference because you're at least decreasing what yeah. they're exposed to um and you're right it all falls down back on the girl which is why I'm such like a uh, about the um double standard because it does it always comes down on the woman it always impacts the woman like two teenagers get pregnant but the woman's more at fault for it and um or the woman has the most responsibilities you know what yeah. I mean and be and like you said, I think it goes back to the way that we are raising our, our boys and our men. And you see it all the time. And I say it frequently that um, women are the gate holders to the patriarchy because they really are. Because it's, yeah. the, it's often those women who are implanting that in their mind. I don't know if you watch um, Love and Marriage, but I love Love and Marriage Huntsville. It's my new thing. But my child's yeah. mom, he cheated on his wife for like years. <coughs> And his mom was still making excuses for him. Like, oh, you're a man and that just happens and she should know her place. And it's just like, no, tell your husband that you tell your son that that's wrong. Like the reason he thinks it's okay is because you think it's okay. That's another, that's another, that's a, that's an island thing. That's a black boy, black mom thing where, you know, are with black moms and their boys, they can do no wrong. Right. <laughs> you know? But it's so easy to jump on a, uh, the girls and, Always. you know, just in, in regards to the, Before. Can, you, can you hear me yeah mm -hmm. can you hear me yeah. okay yeah so uh, that that is a whole kind of island mentality that um it i it's so slowly um you know getting out of uh generation to generation but yeah i totally understand like for example my four boys i'm not hiding and and and, and lying for them and I'm saying to them, no, you treat women with respect because your mother is a, is a woman. Yeah. And would you want any man coming into my life and treating me the way that you're treating this young woman? Right. So well, I, I always... Like, yeah. And I was going to say, even like the mentality of like, oh, she's used goods or she's damaged or she's whatever. It's like, how are you saying they're used when they were with you? Like, what does that make you? If, you, if being with you makes her damaged, then what does that say about you? And, like, I have no problems with people who want to, like, preach um, celibacy, waiting till marriage. I am down for all of that as long as we're preaching it across the board. Don't, yeah. like, send boys out into this world thinking, like, it's okay to sow your wild oats, but then you deserve someone, like, virginal and pure when you're ready to settle down. And, like, anyone yeah. who's fooled around with you is now, like, a slut and a whore. It's, like, you can't have it both ways. Like, either ride that slutty train together or you stay pure because if you want someone who's pure for you, don't you think that person is deserving of someone who's pure for them? Like, it's it's the, the double standard of it that just drives me absolutely insane that we put all this pressure on girls, which then also leads to girls having so much self-hate and such self-doubt when it really doesn't need to be that we would just teach equality across the board. Yeah, and, and it, it, it is all about self-esteem and it's also about self-respect. If we, you know, self-love, if we taught that more in both of our, our boys and our girl children, we would then set them up for a better, better situation as they get older. Because once you love yourself and you respect yourself, nobody can really come and sort of sway that. Nobody can really come and, and cross your boundaries because you're setting them. Yeah. for yourself if you're making you're making them aware that this is how i want to be treated this is how i my expect everybody around me to deal with me mm -hmm. so we do really have to do that and i start young i started young with my boys i mean obviously i i, I had my children at different stages in my life mm -hmm. so 
different I was at different stages of mental mentality yeah. as well. So now for my last set um my twins I'm definitely very encouraging of speaking your mind and your voice is your strongest you know respect for you know your body loving yourself and loving you know making sure that you teach people how to treat you whether that be me whether that be anybody else on the road so definitely it is something that we the double standards will only change if the parents start to change the way that they 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 speak to their their children they raise their children so yeah and i'm happy to see more of it happening i think that i've seen or we're seeing more of it which is so funny cuz the older generations are like oh those young kids they're so blah 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 weak parenting it's like it's not weak parenting we're trying to raise you know kids that don't need therapy later from their way that they were raised like we're trying to sort of fix it before or fixing the problem later. Um, healthy. Yeah. Healthy. And I think it's important to, to, like, acknowledge the vulnerability that boys have as well. You know, we think about, you know, sexual assault and uh, grooming and things like that as things that happen to girls, and they absolutely do, but it happens to boys as well. And boys, I think, on some level, because they're told they should be like, oh, yeah, look at who I landed, or oh, yeah, look at what I did. <clears throat> that they don't feel that they have the ability to say no either because they're raised thinking, oh, I'm a boy. I should I should like it. I should want it at all times. And that's why you have so many boys who are sexually assaulted who don't even realize it, that they are. Um, by so various people in their families, I was, oh, I don't want to say the wrong person. There was someone from Love and Hip Hop recently mm -hmm. who, like, came out and said that, like, his mom taught him how to kiss by kissing him. And we're all just like, that's... It's not how that should. That's not how that should go. But he thought it was yeah. totally normal. He thought it was totally normal. <clears throat> and it's just like no. But like that happens all the time. And I think boys need as much as girls need a safe space to be like, hey, I'm sexual. Hey, I have feelings. Hey, I have hormones. I think boys need a safe space to say like, no, I don't want to do those things. And no, I don't want to just think with my dick. Like I want to be a person outside of that. Yeah, I want to respect myself. I want to respect the other person. Like, and it's so, it was, it was, uh, I mean, I think it was Bootsy who said that he gets his 12 year old to, like, you know, sexually active or to, you know, bring women into his 12 year old. Yeah. And nobody batted an eye. Yeah. Because it was a boy. And and it's 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 like, yeah. That's what I was like. Mm -mm, this, is a, this is a conversation that needs to happen. But even when you're talking to guys and you ask them when when their first sexual experience was, and they say such young ages, and you're like, and it's always like it's for guys too that the women are usually older. Yeah. Um. So it's definitely something that we need to have conversations about and say no. It it can it is sexual assault it is sexual abuse it is not you're not ready mentally emotionally physically all of that for what comes after that mm -hmm. so we do and if i'm coming from a spiritual sense which i am it's soul ties you have to look at all those aspects of it of spiritual spiritually so whatever is we need to really break it down before we put our children in these kinds of situations just because we think it's cool or we think it's a rite of passage. Please let something else be a rite of passage, please. Anything else, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just, it's just so unfortunate because it's so hard to break because as much as you try to break it, there's people coming in who are like, oh, that's just how it is. And <clears throat> that's one of my biggest pet peeves in life. You will not see me get on a soapbox faster than if you say the words, that's just how it is to me because I'm just like, no. Because it's one thing if like you truly believe it. But don't tell me that you don't believe it, but that's just how it is. So you're going to keep saying it and you're going to keep perpetrating it. Like, if you don't believe it, then stop it. Like, it can stop with you. Like, if you don't yeah. believe it, then don't say, oh, well, a girl hooking up with a guy the first night makes her a slut. That's too bad, but that's just how it is. It's like, no, or you could not say she's one. And therefore, yeah. you are helping to stop that mentality. But so many people are like, oh, well, it's always been like this, so it always has to stay like that forever which is unfortunate especially when we're talking about cases of like assault or abuse and it's so and even for well, as we grow up as as women or adults who have gone through trauma who have gone through sexual assault we still there's still shame attached to it you know and it's unfortunate that we still in 2023 while well, going into 2023 or 22 we are still having shame attached to the fact that you know 
I, I should not feel a ways going out in whatever I want to wear or being in a presence of a, a, a guy that I trust and, you know, taking advantage of the situation or guys getting taken advantage of because of the, you know, like you said, college is a very wild and, you know, are the kids really prepared for what comes with college? Right. You know, especially if you're, you're homeschooled, let's say you're homeschooled all your life. And then you're and then free, you're, and then you have alcohol. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> you know, it's a whole different world out there. And are our children prepared and ready for it? Uh, you know, it's the same talk about, you know, do we kick our children out at 18? That whole thought process is just because the world says that 18 is an adult doesn't mean that we have to follow that. Right. Doesn't mean that we have to be like, okay, you're an adult at 18, get out. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. yeah it's just changing it's the narrative. It's one of those conversations that just needs to keep happening, even yeah. though it's uncomfortable to happen. But that's the only way that change really comes about is by continuing to talk about it and continuing to address it and continuing to see it and point it out when we see it, even though we don't want to, because yeah. it makes you feel awkward. But it's the only way that we're ever going to like change anything or move the needle at all. I definitely, I definitely am not a big, I'm also not a big supporter of, of, of just allowing things to happen just because no, we are here. We're capable of changing. We're capable of doing the work that we need to heal, to do better for our kids or to do better for ourselves or to do better. Like there is nothing that is stained in your life that you cannot make, make better. You can't change up. You know, so I definitely, unless you, because you have breath and you're still alive, you can always do better and be better and learn to do better. And yeah. that's what I do. That's what I, I follow in my practices. Learn, we learn things, you know, it, it's not, nobody saying that this is, you know, bad or not so good. But what we are saying is there's other ways of doing things. And we let, let, if you're not capable, have somebody that is able to do so to help you to do so. Yeah, and do better because it's 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 going to help us in the long run. Absolutely, I think when you know better, you do better because that's the most that you can do. You know. Yes. Um, I loved uh, talking to you again. I you know I know it's a rough subject. It's not the most fun one, but it's definitely needed. Um, and so I I appreciate you giving me the time to talk about it. For those watching, this is a part one. So we've sort of talked about like what leads into it and some of like the impact of it. And then we'll do part two on yours. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about like, okay, now what, you know, like, where do we go from here? What are some changes? How do we affect that? Because even when we talk about sexual assault, like 94% of the people who experience sexual assault have some form of PTSD. Um, I'm a sexual John assault thriver. Right right now. I'm 16, I changed my life. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry that you, that you experienced that, John. Um, um, thank you for sharing. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll talk about that on Thursday at 9 p.m. on yours, how to sort of overcome and the next steps forward from dealing with abuse or sexual assault. Definitely. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much for joining me. Thank you, everybody who's watched us, and I hope you'll join us on Carrie's page Thursday night at 9 o'clock. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Food for your thoughts, played it a different animal.